Hey YouTube, this is Michael Kazmierski Dunn, if you guys don't know who I am. Um, and welcome to another episode of Blind Piper Reacts. This is episode 12, I think. So, um, my last reaction was a reaction to an Emma Matthews song, which was, um, De Torna Mio Bene by Mozart, uh, by Proch. And, um, if you look at that last video, which I'm going to put in the description, whose link I'm going to put in the description, you'll see how I discovered Emma Matthews. Um, I don't want to get too far, um, explaining it, but basically I discovered her in 2019 in search of more good opera singers. Um, opera singers that I really like, whose vibratos are not, like, the all-too-common, disconcertingly slow wobble vibrato that just, like, almost every opera singer I've ever heard has that. Um, I'm more of a big fan of those opera singers who can do those good trills and scalic runs, which I call roulades, and, you know, a good range, and otherwise a good coloratura soprano. So, um, yeah, that's how I just basically... Emma Matthews is one of my favorite sopranos. And, um, this is one of the most vocally challenging arias I've heard thus far. Um, and it's called Vorrei Spiegarvi Odio. Um, and it's by Mozart. It's, uh, a lot of Mozart pieces have a K followed by several numbers. Um, this one, this one is K418, so K418. And, um, I have a couple of other sopranos in my big collection of hottest singing voices who sing this aria, but, um, they just don't compare to Emma Matthews. What's surprising is that one of my favorite sopranos by all t of all time, Christina Deutekom from, um, a Dutch soprano, 1931 to 2014, um, doesn't sing that one. And she was actually, in my opinion, she was the absolute queen of the scalic run technique, or the roulade technique. And very few opera singers, if any, can do it like Christina. Um, so anyway, this is kind of a long aria, so I'd rather get to it than have to let you hear me talking and rambling and bantering and on about that. So here we go. And this was recorded, by the way, Emma Matthews was born in 1970. And this was recorded in 2014, I think. Yeah, 2014. Alright, so here we go. It's in the key of A. Nice oboe. Or, no, those are violins, excuse me. That's the oboe. I am wearing headphones, so it is a little bit harder to hear. The higher frequencies. If that oboe were a singer, her vibra that vibrato would be a little bit too slow in the vocal world for me. Diminished chord up to an A. Ooh. There you go, Emma. You rock. Nice vibrato there, as always. One of the most challenging things about this piece is the more than two octave jump in this piece from a B3 to a D6. And uh, that's coming near the end of the aria, but this is why I reacted to it, because it's very challenging. Oh, that oboe is definitely some sort of chatamela. Listen to her, my friends. Those who cannot trill will never have a good vibrato 
for long. I'm not making that up. Joyce Donato says so. If you don't believe me, ask Joyce. Seriously. Even Christina Dertikum... Even Christina Dertikum claimed that a lot of opera singers don't, don't go through the do-or-die trill technique. Whoa, big jump. Big jumps downward don't really scare the heck out of me as much as big jumps upward do. volume variation in it too, not just pitch, but also nice volume variation in there too. Ooh. There are very few ver good ver other good versions of this aria that I really like. Because, like I said, a lot of sopranos don't have good vibratos. Ooh! Nice E6 there, Emma. That's the highest note in the entire op aria. It's good that, that that E6 is the highest note, because pieces that have a big jump to the highest note in the whole piece aren't necessarily my favorite because of the big jumps, you know? So it's good that the E6 is only like a third. So I guess that's what makes it really good. Like not so scary. My laptop speakers tend to vibrate at, at frequencies around that range, like about a thousand hertz. Whoa, there we go. Faster. You've almost got Christina like Rulads there, Emma. Almost. Not quite, but almost. Now, I've heard this aria a few times, so I know when the jump happens. Ooh, nice 30 second notes on the strings. Well, they're not perfectly together, but still pretty impressive. This is definitely a wilder part of the piece. Okay, what note was that supposed to be? <laughs> Too much vibrato, actually. Oh, a little faster. Oh, the jump is coming. I know it's coming. Here we go. I understand the break between the two notes. I've heard some opera singers slide to it. It sounds horrendous. That's a very typical ending you'd hear in pieces in the Amadeus movie, which I actually just watched the other day with some friends of mine. So yeah, that's a pretty good... That's a pretty good piece to react to. Um, I'm trying to think of what the next uh, best piece I could react to would be. I wonder if anybody has any suggestions. Well, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for the um, reaction of um, Vorrei Spiegarvi by Mozart. Um, if you guys 
haven't done so already, feel free to hit like and feel free to hit to hit subscribe um, for some more really cool music that you might otherwise never hear, ever. And also some more reactions from the perspective of a blind piper. So... So... That's it for now, and hope you have a great day.